Hello everyone and welcome to the third part of my Intro to Rails for Beginners Ruby on Rails series. In this part we're looking to cover three things, but if we have time we're going to cover some more. The first thing that we're going to cover is adding Friendly ID to posts. Friendly ID is a gem. And what this gem is going to help us to achieve is to make our application more SEO friendly. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization and this is going to help our application rank more in search. Also it's a security feature. Now if you look in the URL while I'm just, I'm on the homepage right and I just clicked on the show this post. And if you look in the URL now, it says localhost 3000, that part's fine. Posts, that part's fine. But when it says six, that part is not good. First of all, you don't want people to know how many posts you have in your application. And second of all, if we had, say, the title of the post here instead of six, then that would make our application more SEO friendly. Again, SEO stands for search engine optimization, essentially meaning that we would appear in search more, get more people to our application, and thus have a better application, right? So to do that, what we're gonna do is add friendly ID and that's the first thing that we're going to be doing. Then the second thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding user profiles. So where it says made by Maliki and then made by here, it doesn't say, but where it says made by Maliki, the username of the user that made the post, we're going to have like a link to their profile and we're going to build out that page, that functionality. And then the third thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a search bar so you're able to search all of the posts in the application. It's not going to be real time, it's just going to be a simple search that you search and then it shows the posts that come up with the letters in the, in the search box. So just a simple search search functionality, right? So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I'm gonna do is open up a new tab and go to rubygems.org. So go to rubygems.org. And then inside of here, what we're gonna do is we're going to search for friendly underscore ID. Friendly ID is a comprehensive slugging and pretty URL plugin. So they call this pretty URLs. When I say show this post, this is not a pretty URL, but if it was just text here instead of a number, it would be a pretty URL. So it says, Friendly ID is the Swiss Army bulldozer of slugging and permalinks plugins for active record. It lets you create pretty URLs and work with human friendly strings as if they were numeric IDs. There have been a total of 44 million downloads for this gem, so it's clearly a very popular gem. And we're gonna go to the homepage of this gem just to get the documentation and then that'll give us some help, right, installing it. So just to install it, obviously you add to the gem file, so we're gonna copy this, go to VS Code, go to the gem file, and then add it in the custom gems under device. I'll just set, press X on that. So now that we've added it there, what I'm gonna do is open up the terminal, then open up a new tab so I don't have to stop the server, right? That's just better, save us some time, beginner. So CD into the directory, and then we're gonna say, bundle install right that's the next step so once we have got bundle install done as you can see it says installing friendly id the next step is going to be creating migration right now just to explain what migrations are one step further migrations are the way to change the schema.rb and schema is the way is the representation of the database so migrations are extremely important the migration process always works like this you create a migration and then you actually migrate that migration. So you create the migration and then it lets you see the migration. <clears throat> and then if you're sure that you actually want to change the schema.rb, you can migrate it. So that's really handy, right? Really good. And so now what we're gonna do is we're going to add a slug column to the desired table, e.g. users. And the, what this means is that we're going to go to the schema.rb, we're gonna pick our table posts because obviously we're, we're working in the posts section here. And so because we're working in the post, we're gonna add a slug to the post table. And then we just have to create a migration and the slug has to be unique. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to copy this command, rails g migration, add slug to users, slug unique. And it's not going to be to users, it's going to be to posts. So I'll, I'll just I'll just write it out, it doesn't matter. Rails g migration, add slug to posts. And slug is going to be unique, right? Because we only want, so like, let's say if we didn't make it unique, then we could get errors because we could have posts with the same name. And obviously you can't go to two different direction, two different locations on the same URL using the same URL. So that's why we have to make it unique. If it's unique, then one of them is gonna add like an extra cup, an extra string onto it. So it's gonna be the title and an extra string. And one of them is just gonna be the title. So that way we don't run into any errors, right? So make sure you say slug unique. That's why that is important. And so once we've got that done, we're actually just gonna hit enter on this command and then that's gonna create the migration. Now migrations are always a two-step process, right? When we wanna do anything with the database, we have to create a migration and then migrate the migration. So let's go ahead and do Rails db migrate. Although it actually wants us to generate friendly ID first, 
so we may as well do that so run rails generate friendly id rails generate friendly id or you can say rails g friendly id it's the same thing hit enter on that command and then as you can see we've got two migrations so let's go and see what's going on so we've got this add 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 column post slug string and then add index post slug and unique true we haven't seen this index before all index means is that it looks up faster in the database so that the application loads faster so let's say we like on the application i'm on the home page or like imagine i'm on the home page right don't worry about these errors that's just migration errors but imagine i'm on the home page and i click show this post well then using an index will essentially make the database be able to achieve the title of the post better or the slug of the post because we're going to need the slug of the post and so that's really important and then in this one we've actually got a table and this is to store all of the the slugs right so now that we've done that let's clue rails db migrate i notice we can actually we have the server running so i can actually go back to the application and run it run pending migrations in the browser that also works but um i like to have it in the terminal i don't know why sometimes i do in the browser sometimes in the terminal it doesn't actually matter so now if i refresh the errors should be gone so let's go back to the documentation to see what we have to do to make this work so we've run db rails db migrate so that command is done so we're like halfway there right so edit the app models user.rb file as the following. So we're going to do that and let's go ahead and do it now. So we're just going to copy this, go to VS code, models, post.rb, and inside here we're going to copy this. So extend friendly ID, what does that mean? Well, that essentially just means use the friendly ID library and then friendly ID name use slugit. Well, we're not actually going to name is just an attribute and they were using that in the user example but for us we call it title that's what we want to do so friendly id title use slugged so that means that basically use the title as the slugged thing so we're going to have the title in the url it's not going to be the body in the url it's going to be the title in the url and that's good because you don't want to have like an extremely long url because if we had the body then that would be extremely long so then it says edit the app controllers users controller file and replace user.find by user.friendly.find. Okay, so we can go ahead and do that now. What this means is that essentially we have to go to controllers, post controller, and then down to the bottom. And what this is saying is that post is equal to post.find params ID. This is just finding the post via an ID in the URL, like via six. But obviously when we're, we're now changing the URL, so it's gonna be a string, an ID is an integer. So we kind of have to change this to friendly dot find params ID. That way we're able to find it via a string. So that's extremely important, right? And then, so that's that step done. And then now uh, that should be it. We should be good to go. And if I create a new post, uh, we should be good. Okay, I'm getting an error here. It says unrealized constant post friendly ID. I'm just gonna look uh, where I did, where I went wrong. Right, do we have it in the application? All oh, right, okay. Yeah, so we have to restart the server because we created an initializer file. So make sure to restart the server. I just didn't realize that friendly ID came with an initializer file, but I should have done because I've done this a couple times before. So a friendly ID has an initializer file. That's why we have to restart the server. So yeah, now the error should be going away. It should be gone. And if I log in, right, log in with the emails, the email that I had before, the sign up that I had before, and then remember me login, or actually, I'll just sign up, why not? And then I'll sign up and then create a new post. Email has already been taken. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so I'll sign up with the password of 123456, sign up. And then as you can see, welcome, you have signed up successfully. Now, if I create a new post and then do whatever the hell I want, whatever hell, um, just to show, so in the title, I'll just put like, just to show how friendly ID works. And then I'll do create post. And then as you can see, the URL has changed to localhost 3000 posts just to show how friendly ID works. And so that's really, really cool. Now, what happens if I do just to show how friendly ID works in another post? Well, we're gonna test that out now. So I'm going to try and create a new post. So uh, let me scroll down to the bottom here and do new post. And then I'll do, the same title, the exact same title, a body of one, two, three. I can just enter nothing here. The body doesn't, it's not taken into account, so that doesn't matter. And we're going to hit create post. Now that there's no error, and it just says just to show how friendly ID works, and then an extra string on top at the end of it, right? So that's exactly what I was talking about. And now our application is more SEO friendly, which is great. 
and we've got pretty URLs in our application, friendly ID is implemented. So that's good, right? That's our first thing done. The next thing that we're gonna do is create user profiles. And so when creating user profiles, the first thing that we're going to do is go to VS Code and I'm just gonna to explain to you my thinking. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new controller and it's gonna be called users controller. And that's because we wanna keep it, we wanna we want to keep it separate to the post controller just to have a separation of concerns. And then we want to have a, in the views folder, we're gonna have a users controller or a users folder with a show page inside of it. And then we're gonna to route to the show page and then we're gonna display via the ID, the user's data, right? At least that's what I think. So I'm going to go to the second tab, press clear or hit clear and type clear. And then we're gonna do Rails G controller. We're gonna say users and we're gonna have a show method. So we haven't come across this command before, but we're essentially creating a controller as you can see, and then it's gonna be called users controller and it's gonna have one method inside of it, which is the show method. So it's also gonna create a view and a folder. So let's just hit enter and see what happens, right? And as you can see, it created quite a lot of things when we thought it was just gonna create a controller, but that's how Rails does it, right? So now we have our users controller with just a show method. We have our users folder with a show page and we should, um, yeah, no, the roots wasn't changed. We're gonna have to add a root. Okay, so now that we've got that. Okay, and so to get started making this user profile actually work, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the controller and we're going to add this, right? We're gonna say at user is equal to user dot find underscore by, and then we're gonna say username, and then we're gonna set this to params underscore, or params brackets ID. And so we're essentially saying set this at user variable to the user model. So this is just looking at every user model and finding it by the username params ID. So what we're gonna pass in the view. Then what we're gonna do is go to the posts where we're actually gonna have the link. And we're gonna create a link here. We're gonna say link to, and then we're just gonna have a post.user.username, that's fine. And then where the actual path is, we're gonna have post.user. And the reason that this is gonna work is because we have an association made in the post, which is belongs to user and has many posts here, right? So they're associated and that's why that's gonna work. And then we have to add some roots. So let's actually add a root. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say resources, uh, we're gonna say users, and then we're gonna say only show. So we got to say resources, users only show. And then in the users page, we're just gonna have like, uh, we're gonna have some user information. So we can say at user dot email and then might have like at user at user dot, dot username and we might put this in a h1 so this is just a simple profile right and so if we go back to the application that should be everything that we need for this to work so let's go and see so as you can see now we have a link here so we're getting an undefined method email. And I think if I go to the controller and yeah, if I just get rid of this username, if I don't search by the username and if I get rid of find by instead of just, and I just put user.find params ID, that goes away and now it should be working. So if I click on this user, then it shows their email and the username. And if I click on this user, then it shows the email, right? And the reason that just says user slash one is because this user does not have a uh, username but we can make that man mandatory if we want so that every user has to have a username, but for now that is not. So we can just change it right now. We can say post and we can just link to their email, right? And then that's gonna work. Now that we've got user emails and we've also got, okay, so the last thing that we're going to do is implement a search functionality bar. So we're gonna implement a search bar so that we can search all the posts in our app by the title. And we're gonna do this via a gem and the gem is called ransack. So I'm gonna go over to rubygems.org and inside of here, search gems, we're gonna say ransack. So or A N S A C K. And then inside of here, we're gonna go on the first one. It has 81 million downloads or nearly 81 million downloads. And it says <clears throat> ransack is the successor to the meta search gem. It improves and expands upon meta search's functionality, but does not have a 100% compatible API. So that's that's fine. Pretty much we're just gonna to go to the documentation follow the steps and then we should have a working search bar. That's really how easy it is. So to install it, we're just gonna add it to the gem file. So let's go ahead and do that. So 
go to the custom gems, go to the gem file and add ransack. We're getting better at this and we have more practice. So it's we're quickly, we're getting quicker and quicker, right? And the documentation actually isn't here. So, and actually this isn't what I was looking for. I'm looking for the a different type of documentation, which is uh, here. It says in, under, in the GitHub page, under documentation, it says there's extensive documentation ransack. Click that link. And this is what we're looking for. So we've just installed it. We just need to run bundle install. So let's go ahead and do that. Bundle install. And I could have went to the other tab, but I decided to do this. And now we have ransack installed. So start the server again with the Rails S. And then inside here, we're just going to click on getting started. And we're going to do the simple mode because that's what we're going to implement first. And essentially, we're just going to follow all these steps, just changing it for the posts, right? So in our controller, we're going to do this. And we're literally just going to kind of copy it. So go to app controllers, post controller, and go to the index method. And then inside of here, we're going to uh, say at Q is equal to person dot ransack params Q. And that's fine, but we're just going to change this to post. And then instead of people, we are going to say at posts. And it's equal to Q dot result distinct true. Okay, and that should work. And then now we're going to go down and we're going to say... So I think we still need to kind of install something, but uh, let's just carry on going. I think there should be like a Rails G Rams ransack or something, but for now it should be okay. And then uh, let's add a form helper. So we're literally just going to kind of copy and paste this part and then go to the views, posts, index.html.erb and then inside of here, just above, we're gonna say add an N there. And then f that label, we're gonna say title, and then search for title, and that should work. And now if I go back to the to the page, uh, we're getting an error. It says ransack these post attributes explicitly are listed, allow listed as searchable. Define a ransackable attributes class method in your post model. Watching it for items you don't want searchable, for example, encrypted password. So basically, we have to go to the to the model and define our ransackable attributes. So to do that, we're just gonna look here, see where we can do it. So I was running into an error where I had to define the ransackable attributes. So I changed it to just being the title. You have to say auth object is equal to nil. And then in the controller, it's the same. You just say at query or at q is equal to post.ransack params q. And then at post is equal to q.result distinct true. And then in the, in the view, we just have a search form and in the search form we're going to the post path or the index index view with a method of get and then title contains or title underscore cont cont means contains so we make sure to have this title underscore cont and then we're just submitting the form so that's how this works and i'll just show you that it works so if i search by title so i have all these posts right if i just search like first then only the first post some comes up if i search third then the third post comes up second whatever and uh, yeah so that's the simple search functionality that we've implemented using ransack and that's going to be the end of this video it's long enough thank you so much for watching if you like this video please subscribe and i'll see you in the next one